Okay. All right, welcome Dr. Shiva to our, our Monday morning John Birch Society um, uh, Zoom meeting. It's, it's with South Carolinians, Georgians, and North Carolinians. And so we've, uh, we've been routinely meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning and we, we're just so happy to have you on here. Um, Dr. Shiva, you've, you've been really at the forefront of what's going on in America right now by exposing what's going on with what many of us are calling a Corona con. And, and would you just give us some updates? Uh, sure. I mean, I think um, one of the things that I wanted to share, I mean, I'm going to be doing a couple of videos today, but I'll give you a sort of preview, mm -hmm. is I think one of the really, really unfortunate things with this is the um, social isolation that's taking place to people. You know, we, had, we just had Easter pass by, you know, which is supposed to be a time for fellowship where family gets together and people are actually supposed to connect. I just got a call from one of my very close friends and he called me and he's been helping with our campaign and he said something interesting. He said, you know, um, he has a friend he knows um, and his friend has essentially um, uh, had to uh, start taking medications because this friend of his, uh, a woman, uh, 40 years ago, she used to get very depressed when she first came to this country and she's so depressed uh, because, you know, she has a very, very uh, close-knit group of people. You know, she goes and plays. She goes to the gym, exercises. She goes and has a team that she plays bridge with, um, has a church group. All of that has just been shattered for her in three months. And, you know, she's a retired woman, apparently. And this is basically, she's essentially relapsed into something that was 40 years ago. So think about that. We're taking, I mean, not everyone is as resilient. You know, many people are, are a little more extroverts and connected. This is what I, when I wrote to the letter to the, to the president, I said, look, it's not one size fit all, fits all. Um, there are people who are absolutely healthy and, but they need social connections and everyone's on a different spectrum on that. And so the fact is this woman now has to take harsh pharmaceutical medications uh, because of her depression, I, I gave them some ideas, you know, what to do. For example, rhodiola is a very interesting herb that's been reasonably well researched. But this is just one example. We have 330 million people in this country. And, and what social isolation does, even at the biochemical level, some of the best work was done in 1988, which I've talked about a landmark study and more recently in 2000, really showing how social isolation can actually upregulate inflammatory, you know, cytokines and downregulate antiviral um, proteins in your body. So this is what we're doing to people by this kind of one size fits all um, public health approach mm -hmm. to, a, to a, uh, a virus for which the tests are actually unclear, the PCR tests, which can generate uh, many false positives. And they're cooking the books in these hospitals because there's an incentive to brand people as COVID-19. Um, the World Health Organization came up with two codes, as I understand. One code is they're quote unquote positively tested using a false positive testing method with PCR. And another one is they sort of look and feel like something is going on. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's uh, the whole thing is a, one of the biggest, as I mentioned in my first tweet in March 9th, the, this is essentially one of the biggest fear mongering hoaxes to really destroy economies uh, to mandate medicine and to suppress dissent. And we're seeing it played out right before our eyes and to hurt people physically. I mean, yeah. think about the people from social isolation. Think about the fact that uh, we're also not educating people in this very important time how to boost the immune system. And fortunately, um, you know, the videos we're doing are going viral all over the world. So I at least feel that's a good thing. And, and you know, and, uh, you know uh, many, you know, um, blessings for that actually taking place. Dr. Shiva, a lot of nurses in South Carolina where I live are, are out of work right now. And, and we, we had one of our callers today, one of our members of the John Birch Society, she explained that um, the small hospitals are closed down basically because um, they're, they're only open for COVID-19 patients really. And so the, the, is there a strategy we could get in place in states if, if we were to convince the governor of South Carolina to, to sort of open these hospitals back up to where we could do um, regular surgeries outside of, you know, COVID, you know, because right now the elective surgeries are not being done. Do, do you have any strategies that you're, um, uh, 
that you're educating people on to try to get their state back to working again? Yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, if you look at, again, going back to sort of the, I think if you go back to the core of it, the core of it is if you believe and you suspect, which I do, that there's a, a larger agenda here, which is to really uh, create an environment of fear and to shut down everything, the only alternative to that is a model that we actually triage this stuff into a much more personalized way. So here in Massachusetts also, you know, my um, fiance, she works at a hospital. She's a hospital worker mm -hmm. and, you know, she's a, a diag she does diagnostics and she was basically saying there's no one there. It's a smaller hospital. So it looks like, and you know, this can affect a lot of the economies of these small hospitals too. So the small hospitals, nothing's going on. It looks like they're uh, moving everyone into the big hospitals to create this drama of, of what's going on. So, you know, as though there's, sure. you know, th there's this massive crisis. So my theory is in, in the, in the smaller hospitals in particular places where there's no activity going on. Um, it's really important to take the healthcare workers there if they're healthy and support them, as I mentioned with the vitamin D and A and C and iodine. So you support their immune system mm -hmm. and um, get them back to work. It's pretty sure. simple. You take, and, and the critically ill in many of the, I mean, that one is the, the hospital workers themselves. Um, they just, most of them are not unhealthy people, as, as I know. They mm -hmm. essentially need some supporting mechanisms for their physical body, which is what comes from supplements. Very positive things. It doesn't hurt anyone. There's no side effects. And I think those people should be going back to work. Now you have the critically ill, which we don't know they're, whether they're from COVID-19 or not, and the people that are interacting with those critically ill. Mm -hmm. Those people, I think, you know, one is, you know, the president's proposed a hydro, hydroxy a chloroquine mm -hmm. with zinc. You have to take it with the zinc. So you're creating a protective layer. But I really believe that the vitamin A and D are really the way to go because you really support people. And then they can continue working with people with their masks, et cetera, and, you know, washing their hands. But I think we have to triage this into recognizing that one size does not fit all medicine. One size fits all medicine is what, what Fauci is proposing. And that medicine is a medieval metal medicine format mm -hmm. where you, it's, it's basically a shotgun approach. And that's what is taking place here. And so what I'm trying to say is that people can understand fundamentally from a scientific standpoint that everyone's, we all are, are at very different stages of development immune wise. And that's why in that letter, I, I split it into four groups, the healthy, the immunocompromised, the people who, quote unquote, have COVID-19, um, and then the other group of people who are critically ill. So the critically ill, bo both the care workers and how they're being treated, the critically ill have to be put on IV vitamin C. It's a proven technique. It works. And the fact that we're not putting them on that, instead of the V in vitamin, we're putting on the V in ventilators, is quite extraordinary because there's a 90% chance, 80 to 90% chance they're going to die. Well, one thing I'd like to do, Dr. Shiva, because I do have to, to, to um, uh, end this call in just a couple minutes here, I would like to have you back on um, another Zoom call with us maybe later in the week, and I'll, I'll have uh, Jan Murrow work that out for you if that works with your schedule. Sure. But, but Arnie, how do people learn more about what you're doing if, if they don't, because there's, there's some people on this call that may not know how to follow you. And, and to look at these videos that are going viral, how, how do they find what you're doing? Yeah, so I have a website that's right posted off the Shiva for Senate website. It's actually a site, we made it really simple, truthfreedomhealth.com, truthfreedomhealth.com. So if you go there, um, I have, you know, what I've been trying to do because people have been going uh, to my YouTube, this has the most important videos If people spend a few hours and go through them, it'll bring them up to date and they'll learn a lot. Um, they'll learn a lot about systems. They'll learn a lot about um, the coronavirus. I mean, it's one package set of videos that we put up there that seem to be the most important ones people like. They can also go to my um, Twitter. I don't know if people are on Twitter or Facebook, but Twitter is VA underscore Shiva. V as in Victor, A, -A underscore Shiva. And I'm constantly tweeting on there um, that has anything up to date. So if they want to see my, I'm also on Instagram on uh you know uh, va shiva and also on facebook and then okay. if people i mean but on my on my you know i'm running for senate if people want to go to shiva numeral four senate.com and they want to support the campaign in any way 
they can. Okay. Okay. Well, Dr. Shiva, thank you so much. I know this is short notice and, and this is just a thrill for everybody that that's help? on the call. That, that's, that's, that really does help us. And we're, we're just thankful that you joined us and we're just uh, excited that you're doing what you're doing. It's so hard to find people in the medical community that will stand up for what's going on. We, we, we've experienced this for years where it's, where it's, it's hard for people that, to find the moral courage to, to tell people the truth on what's taking place. And we really just don't have time to wait anymore. Uh, the, the, exactly. The well, that's, that's what they banked on. You see, we did a petition for Fire Fauci. I think we have close to, we have to update the numbers, but I think it's close to 60, 70,000. We all actually have close to, I think, 1,500 doctors who've signed it. So one of the things I want to do is bring all those doctors together on like an online call. So that's what I'm working on this week. Basically, if more, if some of the doctors come out, that that may also be a, a courageous event for other doctors. You know, people sometimes need to be inspired by others who have a little more courage coming out first. Well, I, I think you're on to something big, Dr. Shiva. Thank you for joining us. We do have to end this call Thank you, uh, sure. this morning, but th awesome. Thank you so much. Jan yeah, wants I, to I, say – so, Yeah, thank Jan, you for all the great work you guys do and the principles you stand for. I, well, we appreciate that. By the way, that. I, yeah. I live in Belmont, Massachusetts. This was the birthplace of the John Birch Society. Well, well, I don't you, know if you know that. You're going to have to start yeah. an office for us so we get an office back in Belmont. So that's, that's going to be your job. We, we, you know, I have, I have a space in Cambridge. If you guys need space, I have a building. So hey. we'll right in the heart of liberal will. Oh man, <laughs> so that'd be great. Okay. okay. All right. Thank Jan wants to Jan wants to say something real quick. Okay. Uh, I talked to Dr. Carla Dean Graves. I texted and she sent she sent the text back and she said yes, she would allow you guys to listen to the call tonight. And Dr. Shiv is gonna be speaking too. Okay. So um, I think that oh, okay. I will I will get you the information. So I am grateful that she's doing that because they are really working hard, guys, and so is Dr. Shiva. And, 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 and Jan, are those physicians? Yeah, that's the physician call that you're going to be talking to tonight. Okay, all right, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these, I may ask her if it's okay because I have a bigger audience that we can share with. Hold on, hold. On. Uh, okay, I have to get going. Thank you, though. Okay, okay. all right. Thanks Bye, everybody. Later. Next, Bye -bye. next call is tomorrow Bye. evening with Alex Newman at seven o'clock. Invite everybody you can tomorrow evening at seven o'clock. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. God bless.